Well, now Mr. Human's out of uh, protocol, so now he's able to engage in the normal services that any inmate in our facility can engage in. Uh, he has participated in yard, he's receiving mail, he's making phone calls, and so he's uh, acclimating, uh, I, I guess, to the best of his ability to his, uh, his new confinement. You know, I have spoken to him to introduce myself. Uh, you know, I am the sheriff of the jail, and I do speak to all the inmates that are in our, you know, in our custody as I'm making tours. Uh, it was very nondescript. There was nothing uh, unusual about the conversation. It was just a yes. Uh, he's, he's been uh, interacting with my staff, and I mean speaking to my staff um, regarding various things. Uh, he has been watching television. Uh, I don't know what he's been watching. Uh, he's not been reading anything, no periodicals, and no newspapers. And so it, it's really, um, you know, it, it's, for us, it's a status quo and standard uh, operating uh, uh, business uh, with the regular inmate in our custody. Of course, he's a little different because of the crime that he's accu accused of committing. Well, the, the calls are outgoing calls, so there's no incoming calls to him. And so we do not um, monitor uh, who he's calling uh, whenever he's going to make a phone call. And the mail, the mail is really checked. His legal mail is never searched, but his mail, like any other, other person's mail in our custody, will be checked to make sure that there's no contraband. But the mail is not read uh, as to who's sending the mail and what's being said in that particular piece of mail. No, his recreation hours is solely for himself. Uh, we do not have him interacting with anyone else in the general population uh, for his protection and also the protection of the other inmates and, of course, my staff. You know, we have two uh, females that were formerly in our custody that have said, an additional two, that have said they've come across. This just came to my desk, uh, or I was notified maybe an hour ago. So this still has to be vetted because one of the things that we were concerned about when we did start interviewing was an influx of people saying that they have met him or they have interacted with him and not necessarily being true because maybe they want their, their 15 minutes of fame. And so my staff is really going to vet uh, these additional females to see if they actually did come in contact with him and then see what that contact was and see if that can lead us in any other possible direction. Correct. They are sex workers, and it's one of the first things I asked, ironically. You know, I wanted to know their height, their, their uh, ethnicity, uh, just to see if they fit in the general, uh, the general framework of what this, the, the victims of uh, Mr. Hewerman. So, you know, uh, they are a little older now. You know, they're not um, younger sex workers. And so that's why it's very important for my staff to actually vet their, their you know, through an investigation, you know, what they're saying about their inter possible interaction with him just to validate their, their statements. 